Hello, my name is John, and today we're in the cockpit of the MiG-21 again. And it has been quite a long while since I did the last video, but today I decided to do another video on a topic that has been requested quite a lot of times. And in this video I want to talk about how to use the defensive systems of the MiG-21. The aircraft has only a few, so most of you already know how to use them, I guess. But I still want to show you a couple of things you can do with the systems to use them more efficiently. First of all, let's have a look at the RWR, the radar warning receiver. The radar warning receiver that's installed in the MiG-21 is the SPO-10 and it has one important switch, this is this one down here, which turns it on. And as you can immediately see, this indicator up here started to blink and you can also hear the beeping noise. Basically what this indicator here means is where the target or where the radar that is eliminating your aircraft is relative to you. The left upper light here means that the target is in uh, about a sector from the nose towards 90, or 90 degrees to the left. The right L L indicator means that the target is from your nose to about your right hand side and so on. You basically have four indicators and you can have them either in white, which is the normal day mode, or red, which is basically used for the night cockpit. But they don't have any different function, they just use a different color to indicate. Also in this unit, or next to the unit, we have the volume control, which can be used to turn down the volume or turn it up, depending on your preferences. And if you have turned the volume completely down, the red light here will illuminate, indicating that the unit sound is turned off. And we will turn it back up because the audio sound is quite a good reminder that you're targeted or being targeted. Another button we have on here is the lamp test. Not really a function in DCS I guess but it's there. And one more indicator light we have here that's the IFF transponder answering light or responding light. Whenever a friendly IFF system interrogates your aircraft's transponder, this light will illuminate. So often if you have a friendly aircraft nearby and you get a radar warning and this light is eliminating at the same time, you can assume that the radar warning is caused by a friendly aircraft because you know that the aircraft that is eliminating you also asks for your transponder or talks to your transponder and therefore it normally is not a ho hostile. This is only a general thing though, you can never be sure if there's not a enemy aircraft sneaking around somewhere. And the RWR has a couple of dead or blind zones. The, um, it has a full 360 degree coverage around the aircraft with the zones as set. They are overlapping a bit so they are a bit wider than 90 degrees. But the problem is it has a blind spot above and below the aircraft. The radar warning receiver can only receive radars that are within 45 degrees downwards or 45 degrees upwards of the aircraft central cone. Here in the graphical inset you can see that a bit better. And this is a drawback because we might miss out an enemy aircraft above us or a radar below us and the radar warning receiver is not picking it up. But we can only uh, or we can also use it to our advantage and I am about to show you how to do that. First let me unpause the sim though. Okay. Now we are flying onwards here and as you can see the radar warning receiver is already picking up a radar that's on the shore there. But there is also an Avex aircraft in the air somewhere. And currently we are getting eliminated by two radar sources. But we don't actually know that right now. Because as you can see there is only one light blinking and it's blinking irregularly. However, already the irregular blinking can be an indicator that there might be more than one uh, radar eliminating us because most of the radar either have a specific pulse pattern or pulse at a constant rate, just like on off, on off with a certain distance in between the pulses. So, as a MiG-21 pilot, being curious about what is eliminating us, we can do a simple test. We can go, aho go ahead and roll the aircraft. And if you roll the aircraft beyond 45 degrees, you can see there's only one light blinking at a constant rate. And the reason for that is by turning the radar or by turning the aircraft 45 degrees, we have basically used that zone to cover out anything that is below us. And now we can assume that the, now the contact that might now be behind us, as you can see by the 
disliked here, that it might be below us. We d we're not sure if it's on the ground or not, but we can assume it's at least below us. And we can do the test in the other direction as well. Now we have only the aft light blinking, and we can assume that the target that's behind her is lower than us, meaning that the target that is, or the radar that is illuminating us right here, any second now I hope, if it doesn't want to, eh, it doesn't it seems, but we could assume that this radar might be above us or at least at the same altitude. Just let me do the turn here to fly back to the radars and we don't want to fly out of range do we? But this is just a general thing you can apply or use to your advantage. You can tilt the aircraft and try to mask out different radars if they're... It is especially works well if the radar is either to the left or to the right of you. It's quite hard to do the same thing while the radar is in front or behind you. Now we're being locked. And even with the lock this situation can be used depending on a couple of factors. But we can try our luck here. Now we're currently locked. We, ha we know that there is an airborne radar somewhere around there. And we know that uh, there is a radar down there somewhere on the ground or at least below us. We don't however know which radar is locking us, which is quite a major inconvenience or major disadvantage. But again, now we can use our tactic we used before. We can tilt the aircraft or rotate the aircraft, bank the aircraft to get the right word, beyond 45 degrees and try to mask out radar warning receivers. And being banked 45 degrees to the right here, we, we're still getting locked. Um, we are not sure if it's the aircraft above us or below us right now. And we can try the opposite, R bank the aircraft 45 degrees to the left. Hmm, the lock is still persistent. So, oh, now you saw, a lock, is, a lock has vanished. If you rotate the aircraft back, the lock is there again. So we might be able to safely assume, and just apologize my banking off here, the radar actually fired on us, it only, didn't only lock us. But it, as you saw, by just banking to the left there, we could break the lock, or it at least seemed to us we broke the lock. We didn't broke the lock, but we could basically hide the radar from our scan zone, and we could figure out that the radar that is locking us is the radar that is we had on our left hand side on the first try, on the first best. Just let me defeat the missile there. While we're doing a video on radar warning receivers and stuff like that, um, I guess it's at this point right to mention that defending missiles in the MiG-21 is quite easy because you have a lot of power and there it went, but you have to pick up the missiles and see that they're coming for you, which is a difficult thing because the radar warning receiver is not very helpful. But again, let me show it to you one more time. We have a lock on us, a solid lock on us. Let's bank the aircraft 45 degrees to the left or a bit more and wait a bit. And now we have a radar contact behind us and reducing the bank, lock is back again. Increasing the bank, lock is gone. So we can assume that the target that we can still see on the radar warning receiver is at least at the same altitude as us. And it's not locking us. While the target is below us, that could be the one locking us. Or at least that's the one we are effectively banking out. And this is while this is a bit difficult to apply, it often can help you to find out if the radar that is illuminating you is at least at the same above or below you. And this can be used to your advantage, as you guess. We don't have much of indicator, much else of an indicator of the radar's altitude. We c however, we can use this to our advantage. And that's basically most of the stuff I wanted to talk about in the RWR or about the RWR. It's very limited. You have only the indicator if you're locked and if you're locked you don't get the range. And another thing right now as it pops up, we are not receiving any signals right now. That's not however because the radar is not tracking us any longer. That's just because we put it in our blind zones. So just as a reminder, be very careful. The RUWR cannot pick up everything. And yeah, as again, we can just demonstrate it one more time. We can try to figure out if the radar that is eliminating us, tracking us, is at the same altitude or below us or above us just by banking towards it or away from it. Just let me get over here, fly to not to get too close, we don't want to f get another missile behind us. Okay, here we have the solid lock again. 
we don't know if the radar, or let's assume we don't know if the radar is below or above us or at the same altitude. So what we do, we will bank to the left, 45 degrees for a bit more. And, hmm, lock is still there. No, oh, lock is gone now. And now is the lock is still there. So, we are not sure. We, we can assume that the radar warning receiver might be below us. We don't really know. Let try the, let's try the opposite side. Bank 45 or 50 degrees to the right. Is the lock still coming in? Give it a couple of seconds, it's a bit slow to respawn. And the lock is now gone. Let's get back to horizontal. And the lock is still there. And do one more to the left. Again, 45, 50 degrees of bank. Lock is still there. So we can assume that the target has to be on our left side, below us. Has to be on the left side, below us. And we can use, as said before, this information to our advantage as we please. And that's about all I can show you about the RWR. Now let's switch over to the flares and chef. Okay, now let's have a look at the flare dispensers. There are two different flare dispensers available for the MiG-21. One of them is the SPS-141, which also serves as a chamber and it is currently not working in the simulator so I'm going to hold off on how to operate that device until it's fixed and so in this video I'm only going to cover the ASO2 which is basically the fuselage mounted flare dispenser. It has two power switches that need to be turned on, this one and this one and after powering these guys up the only remaining thing to do is open this cover. Even if you have assigned the button for the flare dispenser, you still have to open the cover to use it. And flares are basically di being dispensed by holding down this button, as I did, and you can hear the flares being dispensed at a 0.5 second interval. And this dispenser only holds flares, there is no chaff available, and basically it's only good f against IR missiles. Against radar guided missiles, I personally recommend just diving towards the ground. While this shouldn't really work against modern radar radars, in DCS it does. So diving towards the ground and getting low, also trying to break the radar lock, is a good idea. However, on IR guided missiles, it's a bit more difficult. The big problem is that you don't get any warning. There is no there is no warning like nothing in the MiG-21 that can give you a clue that you are just being attacked by an IR guided missile. So this is really where situational awareness comes into play. It it should be or you should be looking towards areas where you expect an IR guided air defense system or any other hostile that might launch an IR guided missile such as a fighter jet. And the only way you can effectively use the flare dispenser is when you have visually seen a missile coming towards you. You are only holding a few flares, so there is no real use in pre amateurly launching flares or trying to launch flares just to prevent the lock. The only time flares are really a point or really worse to be fired is when there is actually a missile coming for you. So it, you should keep the eyes out of the cockpit as much as you can and you should try to fly high if possible because flying high can keep you out of the reach of ground-based IR systems. And now let me demonstrate how to defeat an IR missile. Okay, we are now inbound to the general area of the IR SAM and the idea is to look out, scan for anything that looks like a smoke plume racing from an IR guided SAM and if we see one we will break off away from the SAM and we will perform a high G maneuver while at the same time deploying flares. Hopefully the missile head will be irritated by that and lose the lock. And there we go, we have a launch. I'm breaking off to the right hand side and while performing a G with uh, turn with high G, dispensing flares as you can hear. Also going low to prevent or to break line of sight or break line of sight and prevent the second launch. And be careful, we can also start to scan out for that's just the low altitude warning coming in and this might have been a possible successful defeat don't be too safe too soon there might always be a second missile but no I don't see any don't think there's any chance of anything still being in the air for us here 
and didn't see the explosion. Often you can see the explosions, but don't. And explosions of not, or of a missile that it's not guiding any longer, but don't let yourself get fooled by that. The missile, or there might be a second missile in the air. But as said, it's very difficult. Uh, there is only a very brief time frame where you have to react against or to react f again th against that SAM launch and to start your defensive maneuver. If you miss that time frame or if you don't see the missile, so missile at all, you don't have any chance. So just le let me break down the process again. When you do an approach or an attack or something where you get low, look out, try to monitor any suspicious area. It's quite difficult in DCS to see the vehicles. I guess in the real world you might be able to pick that vehicle up a bit earlier by the bare eye and see that and keep an eye on it. But whenever you see a smoke plume, the idea is to turn away from it, pull cheese, and while pulling cheese you want to pump out flares. And I personally think pumping out a lot of flares is always a good option, even if you're quite limited. You might only have one chance to use them, and if you have that chance, why not use all of them? And this is also a point where a wingman would help. I personally would suggest to have the wingman following you maybe a kilometer behind, scanning the surroundings below the leading aircraft and checking for any launches. However, the wingman itself can be engaged and he has no one checking for him, so care has to be taken. But then again, the MiG-21 is an interceptor which can fight in the ground attack role but it's not designed for it and spe especially back then there were no fancy missile warning systems or anything like that so be prepared watch out and try whatever you can to not get into engagement range of those suckers and thank you very much for watching this video I hope you liked, liked it and maybe you learned something and let me know in the comments what you think about this video and what you want to see for the next videos. Thank you and have a safe flight.